Um, let me, um, uh, I will call Mac and um, uh, see whether he feels uh, that he's been over the testimony and knows your view on these matters. Uh, you, uh, uh, what's your evaluation of the Kennedy statement? I think it's bad myself. I was surprised that it was, uh, had any of what it had uh, after Bob told me that he thought it wouldn't cause us much trouble. I think it's tragic. I just think it's tragic. Everybody I've talked to thinks the same thing. And I think it's it's so presumptuous that I just, uh, just the, some of the things he says. Well, one of the one of the first things is he says that he, he doesn't want the Russians and the and the uh, communists to uh, uh, be over gleeful because if he uh, and they expected him to be elected president because if he were elected president he probably wouldn't uh, uh, it wouldn't mean that he'd have an easy surrender himself. You ever hear anything that presumption? Listen, the, the senator in effect warned Russia, China, and North Vietnam not to anticipate a turn of events in which he would become president yeah. and quickly end the war on terms more favorable to the communist side. Oh, hell, he don't have to come president to do that. That's what he's trying to do now. No, I think it's, it, it has, has greatly weakened our position with Hanoi, and it's, it's going to mean that it, it, it prolongs the war, actually. It's another one of those things that keeps the other side going. And uh, I think it means a majority of the Senate against us, Steve. I honestly think that. I think that uh, the, uh, the buys and the tidings and the two Kennedys and the muskies, the general Catholic operation there, uh, when the chips are down, they'll pick up enough cases and uh, perhaps a Javits with the New York Times leveling that way. Yeah. And maybe a Scott, he hasn't yet. But uh, they, I, I see the way the ADA and the liberals and how it flows the ball. And if the Times keeps hitting us this way, well, we're just really going to be murderers. I told Clark Clifford a long time last night, he thinks that we are... We would just be idiotic to, to, vote come. to ask for a new resolution. Mm -hmm. He says that that resolution cannot be plainer than it is, that it uh, is unlimited, that you cannot sit to what you do. You imply that you question yourself about what you've been doing. You, you, you imply to the people that, well, hell, you didn't have authority all along. I said the first thing you've got to do is make abundantly clear that you got all the authority you need as commander-in-chief. 160 times you've gone in. Number two, you've got to make it clear that this treaty requires you to stand up your commitment. Number three, you've got to make it clear you wouldn't exercise any of these troops, wouldn't put them out there, and wouldn't start the bombing until they said they'd go in with us and we're all together and we're one nation united and divisible. Now then, he said, you come along and say, well, uh, I want a new resolution. Uh, you imply that you something wrong with this one, and said, would this one just last 18 months like the last one? And where the hell would you be? He says, well, you uh, in the floor debate um, in the Senate, uh, it was pointed out and that uh, the president has this authority. Yeah. And that this is a case of uh, the Congress uh, joining with the president. That's and right. Several of them made that point. That's right. Now, uh, I think uh, I think that'd be one good thing, though, for George to point up that there's 160 times the president has gone in without a declaration of war to protect the interests of the United States. That we, the president, has this constitutional power. I think this I had was 125. Well, well, whatever it is, yeah. let him get it. They told me 163. Yeah. Uh, but you know, whatever it is, and. Uh, or 23, I don't care. Just just, yeah. just assert that he has it, right. number one. Then number two, that the treaty comes along, and everybody debates that. And uh, uh, Foster Dulles, we've got to figure out that he, even the, the liberals that were against him are not ever going to be with us anyway. But we've got to show that this is some of his handiwork, yeah. that he says that we have got to stop uh, subversion, and we've got to stop the communist aggression, and if we notify them ahead of time, we've got a chance to do it. may not do it. We may have to stop them finally in our boots, but we ought to tell them ahead of time so they'll know what they're doing. 
And that is generally his position. And that's what the Senate Foreign Relations Committee said in its conclusion. That's right. Now then, uh, they did that, and Mansfield and all of them signed it. So we, we have an obligation there, and the president wouldn't be worthy of his salt if he didn't do it, or else why have a treaty? And what would the Senate think about a president wouldn't live up to a treaty? Right. That's number two. But this president says now he knows the Senate pretty damn well, and I wouldn't, I don't think any of y'all that want to be nice to him can afford to be say this bluntly. But the net effect is that he knows you so damn well, he knows you're going to run when the going gets tough, and therefore he wants you uh, tied, uh, bound, and delivered beforehand. And he says to Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense, he will not pee a drop until you come in with a resolution that says, number one, direct me to respond to armed attack, number two, uh, authorize me to enforce this treaty, and number three, direct me to prevent any aggression. Now, that's what they did. Now, he's in the process of doing that. And uh, if you don't want any of those things done, we provided you a remedy. Anytime you want to change your mind and do a flip-flop, you can do it. But until you do, why, well, we just got to move. Now, I think that ought to be stressed a good deal uh, so the people of the country know that this damn Senate that's wandering around, I was just talking to a good lawyer in New York, and he says what they're doing, they're confusing the people. The people don't see their alternative. They can't find what the, what would you do. But they don't get it one time. When you just say once on television, what would you do if you were president of the United States? Yeah. That doesn't get through to them. You've got to repeat it like Hitler did or 20 times, and then maybe they do. And I think we've got to repeat this resolution and say, now, we don't say you can't debate. We don't say you oughtn't to debate. We don't say you oughtn't to discuss it. All you want to. But well, we do say that this is what you've done. Now, if you don't want to do this, if you want to seat the communists, if you want to surrender to the communists, if you want to let them go on and have aggression, if you want to abandon the treaty, or if you do not think this is good national policy you enunciated, then, then repeal it. And the president's got no voice in it. Now, he'll go on fighting if he wants to, because he has that power anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, I mean, but I'm afraid that Mac and... Uh, and uh, and George could today, for this thing as vicious as it is, with the Kennedy infiltration all over the place, uh, I'm afraid that out of that will come some commitment that will be a little bit difficult for us. I, well, just, I, I, have, a, I have a hunch this morning that they're going to say something like Averill said, that we ought to sit down in the VidCon. Now, uh, I thought Averill just made a mistake, but in light of Bobby's statement, he may have been, uh, he may have kind of been paving the way a little, because they're awfully close, and Joe Kraft's awfully close, and every damn time I called Averill twice to compliment him, and he's at Joe Kraft's house. And I just, uh, I don't know how much of this is kind of a wing. You know, Bob McNamara has felt that uh, while we ought to have limited objectives, that we ought to make it abundantly clear that we did not uh, necessarily have to have everybody of our own choosing in this government that could be a communist government, and we could have some doubtful characters like we had in Laos. And he has said to me, not once, but I'd guess a dozen times, that if we would moderate our objectives uh, and what we were fighting for there, we'd have more chance of succeeding. And he's also felt, which is a very dangerous position to me, and there's not a man in the government I'd say this to but you, not not another one. But he's, he, he's said to me a number of times that he thought that we ought to give serious consideration to this. And then when he said the other day that we only have one chance out of three of winning, well, I know. Uh, uh, it, it, it just shocked me, and furthermore, it shocked everybody at the table. Right. It shocked Bill Moyer. It shocked Jack Valenti. Jack Valenti said, my God, I don't know what to do. Well, I... Uh, Bob, quite frankly, Mr. President, he hasn't had too much experience in dealing with crises. And um, I just don't believe that. And I can't pull out a slide rule and prove it. But the boys out in the field are proving it. And um, uh, are proving that we can uh, do better than that. And uh, I just uh, am absolutely sure of myself that the other side is going to make some new decisions on this thing. I don't, I don't they must be getting great encouragement, though. If this is causing us this yeah. much trouble, how much don't you know that they're enjoying it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I get hold of Bob, uh, uh, George and, and Matt right away. And what do you think that uh, our official response is going to be to the Kennedy statement? Well, I think we, uh, 
we ought to go back right back to your July statement. Just stay with that and um, and say that. Uh, what well, I just say, would you be willing? Uh, do you agree with Senator Kennedy that we ought to appoint some Viet Cong ahead of time? We can't. Employ. I'm inclined to say. I may be wrong on this. But I'm inclined to say that we have made it abundantly clear that we're for free elections, that we will not let the United Nations supervise them or anybody else that will give us an honest, free election. And we're not in the business. That's just not our occupation at the moment, going around appointing communist governments. That's right. That's right. Well, and uh, we believe in self-determination. And we don't believe in, in, in trading with the communists and, and appointing them. Right. Now, what's wrong with that? I think that's right. Okay. I'll get hold on.